Correct. In the disappearance of Natalie Holloway, police in Aruba are now searching for a possible new suspect. Joining us live on the phone from Aruba is attorney Arlene Ellis Shipper. Welcome, Arlene. Thank you, Greta. Good evening. Good evening. Arlene, in the reenactment that has aired both in Holland and Aruba, there is mention of another woman who was possibly assaulted before Natalie. Do you know anything about this, having seen the reenactment, and you can understand Dutch? Yes, well, I have seen the reenactment, but it's not a new suspect or anything like that. What has sparked it is that Dolph Richardson, in the program, which is an official police program, mentioned uh, an alleged uh, indecent um, uh, exposure to a lady on the, on the place of interest, the fisherman's hut, some days before the disappearance of Natalie. And he emphasized that there's absolutely no proof that there's a link between the cases, but he does not want to exclude anything, and that's why he made a public uh, request for tips. Did he, did he or any other police at the time of this incident, or alleged incident, investigate it? Yes. I spoke to Dolph Richardson today, and um, basically they took the, um, the complaint of the lady, and later, especially, of course, they looked into it, uh, but especially it sparked their interest when Natalie, of course, disappeared. And then they requested the FBI to make a composite sketch, and they did investigate who this man is. The problem is that nobody till date fits this profile or this sketch of the police. Do you know if there have been other complaints about women being assaulted or bothered in the, you know, during the course of the night on the beach, when the beach is dark? Well, assault is a big word. word. This was an alleged indecent um, exposure, so um, how, how do you call that, a peeping tom or something? Um, the, the, from what I know is uh, through the media that there was another lady also uh, stating that uh, she complained about an alleged uh, somebody bothering her on the beach. Uh, from other than these two cases, I don't know. Arlene, um, this reenactment played three times in Aruba, twice in Holland. Do you have any sort of sense, uh, since you live in Aruba, it, did, it, did people talk about it? Did they watch the reenactment? Oh, yes, absolutely. All newspapers uh, cooperated and advertised. Uh, and pleaded with the people to please watch these episodes. And um, to my knowledge, almost everybody on the street was talking to, uh, about it. Um, it was a highly rated uh, show. From what I understand, also on some Dutch blogs, it is one of the shows that actually um, got a lot of tips uh, compared to other, other kinds of these episodes of these shows. And um, it's not yet confirmed, but apparently there has been like 60 tips uh, given to the police because it's a team of the police in Holland receiving these phone calls, and they registered 60 tips. As an aside, uh, what do you think about it? Uh, what do you mean? What I think about what, it? What, when you watched it, what, what was going oh, through oh, your mind as you watched it? I thought it was a very professional reenactment. It just gave you a brief, in, in just 30 minutes, a complete overview of the case, what the police genuinely has and what they don't have, and where they're at in this case. And basically, uh, it just uh, discarded the bulk of information and misinformation in the media, and it showed you there was a confirmation of uh, Mr. Richardson. These are the stories. They led you to the places of interest and where the difference of the stories begin and where the story actually ends, where the declarations end. And from then on, they lead you through it where they need your tips, and they also request it uh, not only for people who have seen something, but also from people who have seen nothing, because that way they can exclude certain places. If a suspect says he went to a certain place and somebody was there the whole night and did not see them, that is also, of course, valuable information. And maybe people are not aware of that. So they pleaded with tourists who were there, uh, Rubens who were there maybe, and uh, almost everybody. And this, this program was also, uh, could you, you could also see it on Curacao, because this, uh, this channel of Holland, they can be received in Curacao as well. All right, well, I'd love to see in English, uh, at least English subtitles uh, here in the United States. Arlene, thank you. You're welcome.
Natalie's parents' lawyer, John Q. Kelly, was on the phone for a long time today with Chief Prosecutor Karen Johnson. Why the phone call? John Q. Kelly joins us live in New York. John, before I ask you about the, the phone call, um, sure. what, what did your client think about this reenactment? Well, you know, the, they're very happy that, you know, the effort's being made, that, uh, you know, they're still t staying on top of the search and uh, looking for tips, looking for answers, and no one's ever criticized anybody when the effort's being made, and, you know, they're making the effort, and hopefully we'll find the needle in the haystack and get the information we've always been looking for. All right, so now why, why were you on the phone with the chief prosecutor today? I could say none of your business, but I'll tell you, Greg. No, actually, she called me a couple times. She, no, she's been very diligent. She wanted to give me an update. Let me know about a couple of things. First of all, after the reenactment, as Darlene had mentioned, they had over 60 tips. They were anticipating more, and she indicated that it's going to take several days to sort through them and see which ones seemed uh, legitimate and what they wanted to follow up on. And uh, she was really upbeat. She said she was very optimistic. I told her she might want to phrase it more as guardedly optimistic because we don't want raised expectations here. But uh, that and the other thing they're doing is uh, the, the land searches are over, so at least we've uh, eliminated certain possibilities that have been talked about for nine or ten months now. And they're actually engaged in uh, water searches right now. The Coast Guard is using the Aruban sonar equipment, the, the Aruban Coast Guard, to search shallower areas with the Aruban divers. They did that Monday and Tuesday, and they're going to be picking that up again in a couple of days. So, I mean, there's, there's some work going on at least. Did, uh, did Karen Janssen sort of pull you aside on the phone and say, we got one really, really good tip? If I told you, I'd have to kill you, Greta. <laughs> no, she didn't. She just said that she's very optimistic. She feels that, you know, some of the information may be, you know, fertile. They want to follow up on it. You know, obviously she knows that a lot of these calls are just crank calls or, you know, just Did she tell you about any one of them? The reason why I'm probably in yeah, sure. we yeah. heard things in December. There are going to be fireworks by the end of January. We were told last week that Dom Pig told a reporter in Aruba in 24 hours something's going to be happening. I mean, maybe they did get the 60 tips, I, and they're, they're really good. I mean, all they need is one really good one. Right. But I'm just wondering, is there anything more than just, like, great tips? I mean, did you get anything substantive? Uh, sh she did not indicate that there was sort of the, the break they've been looking for. If that's what you're asking, she, you know, as I said, she was enthusiastic about it, but she didn't indicate that one particular tip or phone call that she knew of was going to be the tip that was going to result in answers in this matter. So did you, so after talking to her about that, did you feel like this is great news or did you have sort of like, okay, let's hope something comes out of this? I think the, the latter. That's, you know, they're making the effort, they're putting in the work, and uh, I've, I've never criticized that, and I think it's a long shot, but... You know, I'd, I'd, I'd love to see that, that one phone call that made a difference come in as a result of this. Do you have more than one theory as to what happened that night yourself? Uh, I'm open-minded. I mean, is, until we have a definitive answer, I mean, there, there are a number of different possibilities. There was a, there was a, there was a report where the other night on our show, uh, Julia Renfro said that she had seen a video yeah. at about 3 o'clock in the morning, the holiday, and very grainy that uh, it could have been, she didn't know for sure, it could have been Natalie, that, that Beth Holloway Twitty has looked at it and said she does not think it's Natalie. Um, but my question was whether the tape had ever been turned over to professionals for enhancement so we could sort of put that one to rest. Do you know anything about this video? Sure. I know Beth looked at it very carefully and very definitively said it was not Natalie. And that's really on. An, on an, but has it ever been enhanced just on a wild shot that could tell something more? Uh, that I don't know. She seemed very comfortable being very definitive about the fact it was not Natalie without it being enhanced. In terms of someone using a key card in Natalie's room, I, th I think it was a couple times after midnight, do you have any information about that at all? Yeah, that's a, it's a non-event. The, the key card that was being referenced was used at 11 o'clock the next morning, too. It was used the whole next day by, you know, other girls. That was not the key card that Natalie had. Is the police in fact, as, as a matter of fact, that's the information that Beth herself had tracked that down from the, the hotel and turned it over to the police. Do the police believe that Yaron took Natalie to the beach, or do they believe in beach at Marriott Hotel, or do the police believe that she went someplace else with Yaron? Uh, the last time, we're talking about the police now, the last time I talked to Don Pegg and talked to them, they were still working on the theory that it was the, the Marriott and the, the fisherman's hut. Anybody else? I sort of caught a pause in your voice. Have you talked to someone else who has a different theory who is in a position to know? Uh, yeah, there are a couple other theories, too. All right, well, <laughs> you want to share them with the class? Not tonight, Greta.
All right. Well, okay. I got close. I got close. I, I detect <laughs> something. I detect something in that sort of pause. So I'll, I'll leave it at that, John, and sure. I'll, I'll yank it out of you some other night. Thank That's you, fine. John. Thanks, Greta. Bye-bye.